know you're both moving on. Uh, tell me, what the, do you know what your assignments are? Where are you going? Yes, sir. Back to the guard section of Green Barracks 8 9. We're here in the... In D.C. Ah, the same here, sir. Same for you. Well, I'm glad you're not going any further away than that. I'm completely lost here. These are just a couple of tie bars. I know you won't wear them with uniforms, Bob, but when you're in cities, you will see the nice. nice presidential press on the bar. Well, thank you for what you've done here. It's been an honor, Pleased to have you. Did uh, any of you know when the young man, I understand, went out, did he tell you he wanted to join the Marines? Yes, sir, he did. Yeah, he yes. knows us uh, quite a Did they tell you what he had done, what he, what, why he's here? No, sir. He's 14 years old, and you saw him four feet nine. In Detroit, he saw a man dragging a little girl into an abandoned building. He ran to the first house, told them to call the police, came back out, picked up a stick, went into the building, cornered the 220-pound, six-foot-two-inch man that was attacking the 11-year-old girl, and held him in a corner with the stick until the police got there. So I think he qualifies for the sir. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, sir. We'll see that you get these pictures. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. No, Mr. President. Frank, well, this is a nice fish for you. We had a little argument as to how much it weighs. How much it weighs. How much Come on in here, Mark. What's your estimate? Uh, I'll put it at about 35 pounds. Oh, boy, you're on my oh, side, Mr. President. <laughs> this, this represents uh, from all the Western states the conclusion of the Pacific Salmon Treaty. You're going up to Canada and uh, resolve that treaty and others. And this has been 14 years in the making, not this particular fish, but that treaty. Yes, I know. I thought it was 50. Well, it's 14 and a half, so depending <laughs> on This is Marco yes. Penalberry. Marco Hi, is a legislator and was Ted Stevens' administrative assistant here in Washington for a number of years. I was with the Alec group on Monday when we spoke to the ELP and really enjoyed the presentation. Wow, thank you. Well, now, how close am I to the weight? It's about 12 and a half pounds. <laughs> oh, right, we'll get you a big no, one down No, here. no, my memory tricked me. I thought it was coming close, but no, now I remember that the fish I caught holding on here, which one reached the, the floor, uh, to the floor, I caught first time ever salmon fishing. In fact, turned out to be the only time so far. Um, First time, and it proved that beginner's luck. Beginner's luck worked. I caught a 54 pound salmon. Right? And said I was remembering it as <laughs> a little bit bigger than this. So I yeah, well, it was, was bigger than that. Yeah, it was. Now that I remember, holding it out here, it, it touched the. About here. Uh, about, about here. No, I think, I think it was about this length. That's about here. right. Yeah, about, uh, about to your elbow would be a 50. 55 pounder, but this is a little smaller than that because it's the first one of the season. A little later in the season will be 50 pounds, Mr. President. I caught mine uh, offshore. Offshore? That's when they were uh, it, out off the mouth of the river when they were getting ready to. Uh, well, what you want to do, do is find out who baited your hook, too, because that's a real trick to catching a fish that big. My wife always baits mine, Nancy. <laughs> it's an, an executive session, formally passed the uh, treaty. March 7th, 1985. So, great pleasure on behalf of all our colleagues on the West Coast. We are very appreciative and look forward to that working out very well. Well, yeah, it's good. Good. yes, it's going to help the trip very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, this coming down here. I just wanted to give you a little letter from our delegation and our governor. We felt that since you've extended an invitation, for the summit meeting that perhaps you're looking for some neutral ground. And we thought Alaska might offer that neutral ground in as much as it's halfway. It used to belong to the Soviets. We have the security and the facilities, so we uh, are among the first to extend a, a possible location for the summit meeting in the United well, States. He said that he wouldn't even ask for Alaska back. He told you <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. 
So yeah. that's what that letter is, and I wanted to present it on behalf of all Alaskans. Yeah. And we would like you will to forgive me if I say that if we accept that gracious invitation here, we'll have to see what the meeting is scheduled in the summer. <laughs> I understand. Well, I, we have hot water in the house now, Mr. <laughs> so we're all set. Thanks. I Could I shift a subject, Master? You hired all the young man, the 12 year old, that you said you were going to hire to help you do some of your work here, who took that stick and oh, held the guy at yeah, I saw him out here. Yes. Coming in. He's 14. Yeah, 14. Oh, 14. I, was wrong I thought was 14, and the victim that he saved, the little girl, was 11. Oh, and that, you know, but the guy that he found at bay in the building with just a stick the day you was uh, 6 had, feet 2 and 220 pounds. The day you had our, the meeting down here on <coughs> uh, Cap Weinberger and George Schultz, yeah. and you made a few remarks, you said, you had to go make a telephone call. You were going to try to hire him on. I saw him here, and I thought maybe he'd sign him up. I <laughs> <laughs> tell you, uh, I think he knew. He is a very self-possessed young man. That's, that's wonderful of you to take the time to to give that kind of uh, honor to those men. Imagine the courage. Not only the courage, but the presence of mind. He saw it happen. I saw him dragging the girl in. He ran first to a house, told him to call the police. Then ran back yeah. to the building, picked up the stick, and... Did you see him on television when the news commentator asked him how he felt? And he smiled, he said, oh, I feel so good. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. And with him is his wife and his daughter, the president of the Federal Managers Association. I think that would be nice to give uh, Mr. Scoppy and the president of the association, Cufflinks, his wife, the stick pen, and his daughter, the charm. All right. And there'll be one photographer in here with a press. Okay. Mr. Uh, President, how are you? Yes, Mr. Scoppy, Mr. Scoppy, and Sharon. Congratulations. My daughter. Oh, nice. My wife. Good to see you. See you. President Mike Minahan. It's my pleasure. Just fine. Do you want to hold your award up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. See, this is by the day. I know you were 22 years a Marine. Yes, sir. And the young fellow that just left here, 14 years old, who performed a very heroic deed in Detroit, going he came in here, he went outside to tell our Marine lieutenants that uh, he wants to join the Marines. So, Sorry, so right. a, 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 a retired one and a, and, and a recruit. I think he has a few years to wait. Could I leave you with a pen with the uh, association slope? Oh, thank you very much. You can stand right there. Prepare the cufflinks. Presidential seal. Oh, thank you, sir. You can stick with the presidential seal. In case you do have a charm bracelet, there's a presidential seal. <laughs> Mr. President, it was Shannon's birthday yesterday. Yeah. It is. Well, it's the birthday. Yeah. How many does that make? Eleven. 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 See, you can still ask the lady your age. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Closer to the uh, to uh, Santa Barbara, so we'll be able to get out that way. I think. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 
David. 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 The way I see it, there's no more fitting way to mark the coming of St. Patrick's Day than by greeting the green wave. So welcome to the White House, all of you. Well, we're very happy to see and meet our champions, the members of the City High School Basketball Championship team of 1985. And we congratulate you. And I can tell you that I know a little more about your victory than you think I do. I've heard about how Anthony Duckett, Manuel Jones, and Ernest Hall got together to control the boards. And I know that Robert Smith played with the flu. And I know that Sherman Douglas got 14 points. And I know Melvin Middleton played in spite of an injury that he received in the first play of the game. And I know that you faced a really strong and fine team in DeMatha. Do I have the name right on that? You're right. All right. And that you had to work hard to win. I know all this because Kathy Reed, the wife of Joe Reed, your English teacher, is an assistant to Don Regan here in the White House. And Kathy gave us no peace. We couldn't get any work done in the White House until Spingard won. So believe me, on behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you. We really are proud of you and of all the people who've helped you. I think you ought to be proud of your coach, John Wood, who himself graduated from Spingarn. And I hope you thank your assistant coach, Robert Burrell. This ceremony is part of a plot to wean him from his lollipops. We're going to, we're going to get him on jelly beans. <laughs> and I appreciate or congratulate your principal, Clemmy Strayhorn. You know, the past few years, the Spingarn Concert Choir has sung at the White House during Christmas tours. And the graduates of Spingarn include Michael Graham and Elgin Baylor, Earl Jones and Dave Bing. That's quite a powerhouse that you've been running, Clemmy. Spingarn has brought honor to this city. And even though Nancy and I came here just a few years ago, we liked it enough to ask for a few more, as you know, we feel like citizens or members of the city of Washington, and we personally feel that you've done us all proud here in this city. So thanks, and God bless to all of you, and thank you for coming by to say hello. Mr. President, we would like to thank you for the 
generous invitation that you have extended to the Spengon basketball team and also the cheerleading staff. At this particular time, we would like for you to sign a basketball for us and we will treasure it, this basketball uh, for a great deal of time. Any place in particular around here? I've got a pen. That'll be fine, wherever your signature, <laughs> wherever you put it. There's room under there. Right. Also, Mr. President, we would like to give to you something we would like for you to cherish. A picture of the Spingon basketball team. Oh, thank you very much. And also, we would like for you to have a basketball, uh, the basketball that we used to beat Dematha, <laughs> and we are extending that to you. Thank you. You mean? I get the game ball? You get the game ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, very pleased to all of this and to have this picture. This is a beautiful picture. Isn't that the Lincoln Memorial? Behind? Yes, it is. Well, that's great. It exemplifies ac academic excellence. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that that goes along with the basketball championship, too. That's fine. Hi. I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm glad there's still some here that are along about my height. But uh, <laughs> you all are growing bigger these days. <laughs> but uh, pleased to have you all come down. I had hoped that there was going to be an opportunity we could have a little visit, and I was reading about Reverend Jackson's appearance before your student body the other day, and uh, I thought it was a very wonderful thing that he did with regard to drugs. I thought that was just great. I did, though, then, think that maybe he didn't quite misunderstand or quite understand our program with regard to aid to education and uh, for college aid. Uh, we're not really cutting that back. We're redirecting it a little. We found out, and we don't think that people with incomes of $100,000 a year need your parents and others like them paying taxes to help put their kids through college. They ought to be able to do that themselves. And so what we've done is redirect the aid to people who really can, can claim a, a need for having help. And we've set a cap of, so that we can increase the numbers at $4,000 of student aid in the form of jobs, grants, so forth, uh, which is the average across the country total thing of tuition and fees and room and board and so forth at uh, the, all the state colleges and universities in the country. And in addition, students would be eligible for uh, guaranteed loans of another $4,000. And we actually will be spending, uh, I think the figure's around $13 billion on that. So uh, I was glad that he suggested that you ask, but a sorry that we didn't have a chance to answer, so I just decided to answer it. Look here for you, but again, God bless you and congratulations. You really, 31 straight. That's right. That's, that's quite a record. Good luck to all. Of you. Thank you.
I'm going to take him to the hoop. Tell Ray Don to meet me that rose there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> 